Hi, my name is Rebecca Reif, and I'm really glad that you're joining me today. I am in the book of Philippians. I'm in Philippians chapter 1, and I am on verse 9 and 10. And so, I mean, the whole chapter is amazing, just amazing, and it's filled with practical applications. It's filled with, um, you know, easy to apply steps and tools that can grow us and mature us spiritually in Christ. And so it's a, it's a worthy book to go and study and read, but I want to stop and kind of linger just at mostly verse nine. And so I'm going to start at nine and this, I pray that your love may abound more and more displaying itself in greater depth in real knowledge and in practical insight, verse 10, so that you may learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best and disti distinguishing moral differences, and that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, until actually living lives that lead others away from sin. Isn't that beautiful? So it's something that I'm, I'm really working with the Lord on you know I grew up in a very dysfunctional childhood and um, you know my siblings and I we grew up in uh, just about every form of abuse that you can possibly imagine and and so it was a uh, you develop a lot of uh, coping skills and um, behavioral tools that work in a dysfunctioning atmosphere but when you try and get into a functioning wholesome life uh, the tools don't apply, they don't work. And so, and, and you just end up wrecking your life and, and repeating a cycle over and over. And so, you know, I had, I really, it's taken the Lord a long time to get me where I'm at today. And, uh, you know, a lot of um, humbling, a lot of teaching, a lot of discipline, a lot of guidance, and, you know, a perfect amount of both discipline and pouring out of his love. It was like the perfect balance, you know, and in that process, I'm, I would not say that I've arrived at any place, but I, I would say that I'm just beginning to be able to have the love of God shed abroad in my heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm just now beginning that. It, it's just now becoming something. Um, I worked at it in the past, but it was just more in my own strength. This time at this point it's more that I'm how would I say abiding abiding in Christ so it's like I'm leaning on his love to work through me and it, that's a whole different ball game so I'm I would not say that I've I'm I mean just now really starting to apply the practical tools that go with that and so when he led me to this I just think it's so pretty because it's got um a couple of uh, tools, a couple of tools that we can apply, and they're easy, they're practical, they're simple, and it starts out with the first one, and this I pray, and this I pray. We can underline that part, and this I pray, and what do we pray? That our love may abound more and more, displaying itself in greater depth. We can pray for real knowledge and practical insight. How wonderful is that? You know, that's one of the greatest things about God's Word. It's, just, it's so practical. It's not complicated. It's not hard to apply. It's uh, not difficult. He's not asking us to do difficult things that are too complicated for us to reach. You know, it's the dying of ourselves and the growth in spiritual, uh, you know, and spiritual application that's that part is the difficult part but God's Word and the, the practicality of it and the easy to apply steps is not difficult and and that's what I need I'm a complicated person who needs simple tools you know to get through a hard life and so I you know I make myself complicated it's more like you know uh, I got a lot of complications because because we most of us can say that we came from hardship. Many of us can say that 
uh, there were things we, we had in our life growing up that made things difficult for us. We have, you know, all of us have our own private little struggles, our own hangups, our own habits, our own dysfunctions. You know, we all have something, some kind of struggle within. And it's the dying to ourselves and that struggle and giving it up and becoming more Christ-like that's the hard part. But the word of God and the ability to apply it in our life, if we do that, if we are doers of the word on a daily basis, then that's when the growth becomes more and more. And if we allow ourselves to die to ourselves and become more Christ-like and apply those tools, press in, press on, push through it, you know, push through that and keep moving forward. The transformation happens. The sanctification is going and we become new creatures and it's just the coolest thing ever. And I think that that is one of the most amazing parts about God is that he can change us from the inside out because the Holy Spirit can remind us of those scriptures. You know, I'm going to uh, pray that, that not only, not only that my love would abound more and more displaying itself in greater depth in real knowledge and in practical insight, but that the Holy Spirit would quicken me, that he would quicken me with this scripture and bring it back to my remembrance when I need to apply it. There's a, that spiritual walk with God that is closer than, uh, there's nothing closer. There's nothing more intimate. And I have nothing more intimate in my life than having the Holy Spirit live in me and guide and direct me and help me to push through things and help me to apply what I need to apply. Help me to continue to do the next right step. He is the strength within me to do each step. He's my strength. If he were not, I would end up just not doing it. You know, I, I can get kind of lazy. And so it's the Holy Spirit that helps me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but um, I know that there's a lot of us that have that testimony. So I'm going to go on to verse 10. So that you may learn to recognize and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best and distinguishing more differences, that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, actually living lives that lead others away from sin. Isn't that beautiful? And it all starts out with one easy, practical step. And this I pray. And it is an easy prayer to pray. And then to learn. So, you know, learning something, you know, means that you study it out. You study that thing out so that you can apply it. It's a skill set. And skill sets become better and better the more you learn about it and apply it. So it's about doing that skill set and learning about it more and more. It's about studying God's word and applying it more and more so that we may learn to recognize and treasure. So there's our, our need to hide things in our heart and treasure what is excellent, identifying the best and distinguishing, dis, I can't say that word, distinguishing moral differences. And here's the great, here's the great promise that we may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ and that we may live lives that can bring others to him. You know, we can live lives that will lead other people away from their sins. And, uh, and isn't that in all reality, that is the, you know, the gospel that's written on our heart and our life displaying the gospel day after day that we are, um, a display of, of Christ. He's written on our hearts. People can read that. And so, you know, our very lives can be a testimony and we can live out the Great Commission. We can live it day after day and people watch the transformation and they recognize that, you know, 
God is doing something in our life and and in such a way that it's appealing to other people. And they don't want to live their life the way they have been living anymore because they watch the change in you. And isn't that beautiful? But it all starts out with one easy to apply step. And this I pray. And so with that, I hope you're blessed. I hope that we all take time out of our day to sit down in a quiet place and just abide in the spirit of the Lord. Just sit and abide in him and pray to him. Just pray. You know, offer up prayer to God and hear what he has to say and be still and know that he's God because it's so very important that we stay vitally united to the vine and we abide in the Holy Spirit so that we may learn how to love others and we may learn how to recognize and distinguish what is righteous and right so that we can have the love of God be shed abroad in our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can become more Christ-like. And so I hope that you can take that word. I hope it um, touches your heart and does something beautiful. And uh, with, I, with that, I, I'll say goodbye. I love you all. Bye-bye.